Hello, my friends. I'm Jeff Yaldin, celebrity teen and family life coach, renowned youth motivational speaker, and teen author. For 20 years, I've traveled all over the world, touching hearts and changing lives. You have questions. I have answers. I am here for you. And together, I hope to bring purpose, passion, and direction to your life and your family. Hello, my friends. Urbandale Middle School, Iowa, to the Urbandale students, all of the staff members, teachers, those people that work in the cafeteria, maintenance, bus drivers, administrators, also to the parents and the community of Urbandale, Iowa. My name is Jeff Yaldin. I'm a suicide prevention specialist, teen motivational speaker, the author of Your Life Matters, I'm also a radio show host of The Jeff Yaldin Show. I'm honored and privileged to be able to come here and bring this message to you, although I'm not so much honored to bring this message. I'm honored to meet you. Under the circumstances, it's not such an honor. I have been contacted by people in your community and also people in other communities about the recent events that have taken place the loss by suicide of two teenage girls, a sixth grader and an eighth grader, 10 days apart. Two girls that we don't think knew each other, or what I'm hearing, did not. I'm reading in the paper the speculation of bullying. Listen, let's not jump to conclusion and spread rumors, unless there was something very definitive that said so-and-so is making fun of me, but... The reality is when a person chooses to take their own life, there's a lot more than just being bullied. I think young people have incredible amounts of pain in their life today. The speed of hurt for a teenager is almost as fast as turning on a light bulb, and I've got different theories about this. I think mental health is definitely something that we need to address, and we need to certainly address it at the younger ages. I'm reading this article here, and I, I want to correct your superintendent, Doug Stilwell, when he says something. And, and I know what he means to say, but as a suicide prevention trainer, I kind of want to give my two cents on what he says. It's one of those things you hate to bring up because it might plant a seed in kids' heads. It's a fine balance of what do you share and what do you talk about too much. I wish there were rules that govern these things. We're in uncharted territory. Mr. Stilwell and and administrators, listen, parents, community, let, let me tell you something. I have two thoughts here. Number one, let's not blame loss on our school and our teachers. That's not fair. Our school and our teachers do so much to inspire and educate and motivate our teenagers. A lot of times bullying happens in the hallways and on school buses where our teachers don't see it. And when our kids leave the doors, we are restricted legally in what we are able to do. Having said that, I also want to say this. No teacher's master's degree teaches you how to deal with the loss of a student. No administrator's certificate teaches you how to handle what to do. So I always tell our superintendents and our principals, follow your heart. The first thing you have to do is you have to take care of your kids. Number two, you really have to take care of your teachers because this is equally as devastating for them as it is our peers. No matter what you do, you kind of darned if you do and you darned if you don't. But I'm going to say this as a suicide prevention expert. If you're concerned about speaking about suicide to a teenager because you're afraid that we might plant seeds in their heads, I am going to say this. If you are thinking about talking to our kids about suicide, then I promise you, they have already thought about it themselves. Suicide is an epidemic today. It's an epidemic in America. Administrators are telling me they're spending almost 80% of their time dealing with mental health, depression. 
So I think we need to talk about it. We need to stop using the S word. We need to stop kind of, it's taboo. Let's push it under the carpet. Let, let's not address this. My friends, we do need to address this. One suicide is too many. This doesn't need to happen. What we need to do is address it in a positive way so the kids understand there is hope. A lot of our kids today are having trouble problem-solving skills and coping skills. I think the expectations are so great, not just from parents to our kids, but the expectations on peer-to-peer -peer and the expectations that our kids are just putting on themselves. What we need to do is we need to teach our kids one of the things that we learn as an adult. As we get older, we become less concerned with people's opinions. They all have them. But we start to concern ourselves with becoming a better person. We open up. And one of the things that I always say to our kids, lose your ego and open your heart. And if you have people in your life that you trust, people in your life that you respect and whose opinions you value, go to them. Go to them. I want to offer my support. I want to offer my prayers and my thoughts to not just the families of these two young ladies, but I want to offer my support and prayers to the community, to the school, to all of the students and the teachers. I know this is such a, a devastating, hard time. And I know that many of you have questions that might go unanswered. Well, here's what I want to suggest or offer to you. On March 25th, I'm going to be in your area speaking at South Thomas, I think I pronounced that right. I'm also going to be at GMG High School on March 25th in the evening talking to parents about my theory, mental health, depression on teenagers today. I want to invite each and every one of you as parents to come out. I'm going to be sharing what we as parents need to do with our teenagers what we need to understand about what teenagers are going through. I'm going to talk about cell phones and social media and how this plays a role in teenagers' anxiety and depression. We're going to have a great night. I want to encourage you to come out. Last week in a community in Indiana, over 1,500 parents came out to my evening program. So I think we're going to have a great turnout. We're going to get some great information. In the meantime, I want to offer this. We have dealt with the loss of two of our young ladies. I'm sad for you. I wish we weren't meeting under these circumstances, but the reality is we have to move forward now. I'm pretty sure that we've had the services and we got to say our goodbyes. But as we move forward, we need to understand that these two young ladies are not walking through the door. I'm sorry if that sounds insensitive. I don't mean to be insensitive. But as a suicide prevention expert that works with teenagers and schools, I got to come and bring morale and school spirit back because this is your life and this is your dream. And so in doing that, I have to shake things up. That's what I do. I want to invite all of you to take the time to go through the grieving process. Young people, I want to invite you to spend more time with your parents. And parents, I want you to spend more time with your children. You know, if, if only in the car ride when your kids put themselves in and they put on their beats or they're playing with their phone, Let's make a decision now that we're in the car. There's no more phone. There's no more music. There's no more beats. That is one of the best times where we as a family can come together. Parents, just spend time listening to your children. Spend time asking them questions. And I know at first it's going to be uncomfortable and they don't want to talk like mom, dad, this is weird. We don't really talk like this. It's okay to talk. It's okay to communicate. It's okay to say, I love you. It's okay to say, have a great day. Can't wait to see you later. Let's start from there. 
So anyway, I don't want to waste any more of your time. I wanted to come by as a suicide prevention expert in schools and to parents and teenagers. I wanted to let you know that my thoughts and prayers are with each and every one of you. I want to invite you out. I'm going to be around your community on March 25th, speaking at those two schools, South Tamas and also GMG High School. They're bringing me in after one of their recent suicides. So I'm at Jeff Yaldin on social media, and my website is jeffyaldin.com. If I can do anything and help you in any way, please let me know what I can do. And lastly, to Mr. Stillwell, I hope you understood that uh, I wasn't disrespecting you and I didn't mean to do that. But I think uh, one of the best things we can do is we can talk about it and we need to talk about it. Not for the fear that we're going to give someone an idea, but I think we need to talk about it in a way that we're going to give them information that if they are feeling down, if they are emotionally in pain, there is help. And they should open their heart and lose their ego and talk to people that can help them get the professional help. So I ask every single one of you as teachers, parents, and students, coaches, if your child is hurting, know that it's okay to take your child to therapy. Maybe it starts with your family doctor. Maybe it starts with seeing a counselor and understanding some of the underlying issues. Depression is okay. I deal with it. I deal with anxiety. I'm diagnosed with bipolar type 2 and PTSD. I'm in counseling. I take medication. It's one of the greatest decisions I've ever made in my life 25 years ago. And here I am today to help you with the issues that you're facing. So I'm happy that I was able to share this message. And I'm happy to be able to say that my prayers and thoughts are with you. And I'm happy to say to the teachers and students and parents, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You all do great work. Thanks for listening. Get the reason.